So we'll talk about heat capacity for a minute. Heat capacity for a minute. Let's say I told you I added 50 joules to a certain substance. And that substance increased its temperature 5 degrees. Whether it be Celsius or Kelvin, it doesn't really matter. They have the same space in between degrees, right? So my question is, is how much heat does it take per degree increase? How much heat does it take per degree increase? 10 joules. That's what's defined as the heat capacity. So heat capacity, usually given the term, you know, the variable C, or the symbol C anyways, is defined as Q over delta T. Q over delta T. It's the amount of heat needed to either be put into or pulled out of a system to get a certain temperature change, per temperature change. And so in this case, we put in 50 joules into the system. That's positive 50 joules as far as the system is concerned. And it changed its temperature positive 5 Kelvin. And that came out to 10 joules per Kelvin. That's called the heat capacity. Cool. And it's a fairly simplistic thing, but a lot of students keep it in their mind as just this equation. It's an equation. I don't remember what the equation is. Well, if you think about it in this kind of a context, it's just the heat required to change something's temperature one degree, whatever you're looking at. It's called a heat capacity. So, but we usually give you a couple of specific, I shouldn't even use that word, a couple of very particular types of heat capacities. And the reason I didn't want to use the word specific is because one of them is called the specific heat capacity. Sometimes in Gen Chem, we just call this the specific heat. And we symbolize it with C sub S for a specific heat capacity. So and the reason we use this is it's scaled, so to speak. Notice if I have a glass of water versus an entire swimming pool of water, and I give them both the same amount of heat, which one's going to have a larger temperature change? A glass of water. There's a lot less water there. So heat capacity is what we call an extensive property. It depends on how big your sample is. Well, we define the specific heat in a slightly different way. And so in this case, your specific heat, let's say, of water, liquid water, is 4.18, round it a little bit, joules per gram Kelvin. So joules per gram Kelvin, you might think of this as joules per gram per Kelvin. <coughs> And so this thing is scaled. It's scaled to one gram of water. For every gram of water, it takes 4.18 joules to cause a one Kelvin temperature change. It's this many joules per one gram per one Kelvin temperature change. So what if you had two grams and you wanted to change it one Kelvin temperature change? How much would it take? Yeah, twice that. What if instead of two grams, let's say you just had one gram again, but you wanted to change its temperature? Two Kelvin instead of just one Kelvin. Again, double that. And notice this is where, you know, you learned back in the day the equation Q equals MC delta T. So notice if we had two grams, we had to multiply the heat capacity, the specific heat capacity, by two. If we wanted to change two Kelvin, we had to multiply the heat capacity by two. Notice, lovely equation Q equals MC delta T way back in the day. So if you rearrange this, you see what the specific heat capacity really is. So the heat capacity is the heat change per mass per delta T. Well, if you recall, what's Q over delta T all by itself? It's the overall heat capacity. And so a specific heat capacity is just the overall heat capacity divided by the grams, divided by the mass of however much you got. We define a similar quantity called the molar heat capacity. The molar heat capacity. And it pretty much ends up being the same thing end of the day here, is it's the overall heat capacity divided by n this time, the number of moles of that substance you have. So let's look at a couple of different applications of where you might use this. This is stuff used back in Gen Chem, but I just want to make sure you thoroughly understand this because this is not the place you want to lose points in this class. This is the easy stuff. So once you've reasoned it through a couple times and on a couple of basic calculations. So let's do a couple of those real quick. So 
So let's again give you the specific heat capacity of liquid water. I'm giving you that. So 4.18 joules per gram per Kelvin. And so my question is, how much heat is required Uh, let's say to raise 20 grams of water from ten degrees Celsius to twenty five degrees Celsius. That's the question. And we're told to assume this is the heat capacity of liquid water over that temperature range, ten to twenty five. All right. So what do I do? Well, it's this many joules per gram. Well, how many grams do I have? So then what would be the heat capacity for, say, 20 grams? If this is the heat capacity per gram, what would the heat capacity be for 20 grams? Yeah, multiply by 20. Kind of that's why we multiply by 20. And if this is you know, the amount of heat it takes to make the temperature change per 1 Kelvin, what if I want it to change? 15 Kelvin. Well, multiply by 15. And again, that's where this equation comes from. And at the end of the day, great. If you want to memorize the equation, awesome. But if you can just re reason it out or use dimensional analysis, notice your dimensional analysis. What's heat going to have units of? Joules. So I don't need to multiply this by to get joules out. Grams and Kelvin. So multiply by the grams, multiply by the Kelvin. So either way, end of the day, you just got to plug and chug some of this stuff. And so in this case, Q, our mass was 20 grams. So in this case, specific heat capacity is not that, 4.18. I need somebody to plug and chug this for me. And then notice it's delta T, right? What's delta T? Like def change in temperature. And change in anything is always final minus initial. Now be careful. A lot of students do this. They're like, OK, 25 minus 10 is 15, but they're like, that's in Celsius. I should convert that 15 to Kelvin. Don't do that. A delta T in Celsius and a delta T in Kelvin is the same number. You can convert Celsius to Kelvin and Kelvin to Celsius, a temperature. But you can't convert a temperature change in the same fashion. Notice 10 to 25 would be the same thing as <coughs> 283 to 298. You actually convert temperatures, not delta Ts, using, you know, add 273. So 283 to 298 is still a 15 change. No matter which scale I'm looking at, Celsius or Kelvin, delta T is the same value. There's the same amount of space in between the degrees for each. So, but I changed it to Kelvin so the units would match. And my point, again, was that 15 degree change in Celsius is still a 15 degree change on the Kelvin scale. Cool. And can somebody work that out for me? 1250, you said? Cool. And I'm not worrying about sig figs, guys, because I didn't really worry about it when I wrote the problem. But you need to worry about sig figs, right? So 1254 joules. Awesome. The next thing I want is if that's the specific heat capacity of liquid water, then what's the molar heat capacity of water? If that's the specific heat capacity of liquid water, then what's the molar heat capacity of liquid water? Well, what's, what again is the definition of specific heat capacity? It's really C over M, heat capacity over mass. What's the definition of molar heat capacity? Specific heat over mass. So, uh, well, heat capacity over moles. Heat capacity over moles. So if you look here, what units should I expect to end up with for a molar heat capacity instead of a specific heat capacity? <coughs> what are the, all the units, though? What are all the units? All that over moles. Almost, almost. So notice, what are the units for just plain old heat capacity, Q over delta T? What are his units? 
joules over Kelvin. So then what would be the unit for molar heat capacity? Yeah, joules over Kelvin moles, or joules over moles Kelvin, same diff. And so in this case, I need to turn this into joules over moles Kelvin. And you guys have been doing this kind of calculation for a long time now, right? But until you realize that's all you're really doing, a lot of students don't get this problem correct. So what do I need to do here? Well, is joules good? <coughs> joules is good. Is Kelvin good? Kelvin's good. What needs to change? Grams to moles. How do you change grams into moles? Molar mass. What's the molar mass for water? 18. So I need grams on top, moles on bottom, and one mole for water weighs 18 grams. Sweet. That's all you do. Multiply by 18. And that will give it to us. So our grams will cancel and we'll end up with joules per mole Kelvin. Somebody get me that? Cool. It's, like I said, a pretty simplistic calculation. Once you realize what you're doing, you're just converting grams to moles. Once you realize what you're doing.